evening. Pace e bene, as you will say in Rome. Peace and all good. Considering the holy year of mercy, I invite you this evening to walk together a little bit through the Franciscan tradition and to have a meditation on mercy and justice, looking to Francis and other holy persons of our Franciscan tradition. And I invite you to walk together through this meditation by looking to images, listening to texts, and by considering the voices of Francis, his sons and daughters. Our evening will begin and will start with this image. Mercy, the distinct justice, a Franciscan approach. The image you see this evening sets a window of the Friars Chapel in Cologne in Germany. As you might hear, I'm a German, so my home friary in this moment is Cologne in Germany, and in the chapel of the friary you will find this window. And casually, this evening, walking around the friary here in the old mission, I saw this image on the floor. And I asked the guardian if it's possible to bring it down for this evening. Because both of these images are deeply connected to the life of Francis, as we will hear, and to his vision of mercy and distinct justice. Both of these images we have here this evening in front of you are images which are deeply connected to the last words of Holy Francis, to his testament. Let us hear some words. He is giving himself to the brothers and to all of us where he is considering the beginning of his life as a friar. He is writing, the Lord gave me, Brother Francis, thus to begin doing penance in this way. For when I was in sin, it seemed too bitter for me to see lepers. And the Lord himself led me among them and I showed mercy to them. And when I left them, what had seemed bitter to me was turned into sweetness of soul and body. And afterwards, I delayed a little bit and left the world. And the Lord gave me such faith in churches that I would pray with simplicity in this way and say, We adore you. Lord Jesus Christ, in all your churches throughout the whole world, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. These words of the beginning of the Testament of Francis are represented in both of these images. Francis, who is meeting the leper, and Francis, who is worshipping Jesus on the Christ. Meeting the leper, overcoming his hate and bitterness, Francis recognized the sweetness and found the face into Jesus Christ on the cross. And at the center of this experience, 
we find mercy. I showed mercy to them. To consider better and to understand deeper these words of Francis and this important experience in his life, we need to understand a little bit and to see a little bit the historical context. The lepers. Up to the 11th century, before Francis was born, the lepers have been separated from the society because of the danger of contagion. But there was a great responsibility to take care of them, based on the preaching of the fathers of the church, especially of Pope Gregory the Great. He lived from 540 up to 604. And in his preaching, he recognized the lepers as the sufferers favored by Jesus Christ himself. All changed in the year 1179 with the Third Lateran Council. The lepers now are seen as punished by God, not, only, not anymore God's favorites. Punished by God because they may have led a sinful life, especially because of suspected sexual sins. And they must be isolated because they are dangerous for the life of the faithful as there is a danger of being infected by sin. The consequences of this new politics in the society and inside of the church towards the lepers we can see the consequences also in the history of Assisi in the lifetime of Francis himself. In the lifetime of Francis, we will find contracts between the nobility and the new burghers. A contract from 1203, one from 2005, and one from 1,210. Contracts to establish, as the text is telling us, justice, promoting the good, true, and just peace between the landlords and the burghers, excluding the poor and the lepers, in the name of justice, law, and order. The poor, and particularly the lepers, have been accused to jeopardize the just order. They are disturbing the life of the good landlords and the good burghers. Because of this, every contact with these people have been Forbidden. Now we can understand the words of Francis in his testament. It seemed to me bitter for me to see this lepers. But contemporary, with this condemnation of the poor and the lepers by the church and the society, emerged a kind of protest against this cruel interpretation and application of order and law. A protest 
which was also manifested through an image. It's the image of mercy. To better understand this image, it may be helpful to listen to the Latin word which was used in the time of Francis. Mercy, the significance in Latin is misericordiam. That means to have an open heart for whom lives in misery. And we can see here one of these images which have been showed in the time of Francis. What we can see here is a poor man. You can see here a basket. That's a basket the poor need to use going around to ask for something to eat. And they put it in the basket every day. And you can here see a stick and some clothes. That's a sign. This poor man is a homeless. And he is walking around to ask for mercy. And here you can see a woman. She is the symbol, the representative of mercy. And you may see here, she holds the arm and the hand of the poor near to her heart, near to her womb. And the representative symbol of mercy, this woman was showed following the biblical interpretation of mercy. And we have there the words coming out of the Bible, rahamin, and that means the warmth, where the new life comes from. So mercy is giving birth to a new life. And what here is seen is by holding the hand of the poor man, mercy creates relationship. She gives new life to this poor, homeless man. She recognizes his dignity. She offers him esteem and appreciation. This image was a protest against the exclusion of the poor and the lepers and an invitation to share the social and religious reality, to show compassion. We don't know if Francis ever has seen one of these images of the women mercy and the poor homeless man. But he was touched by his own experience, what is represented here in this image. I showed mercy to them. And showing mercy to them, what had seemed bitter to me was turned into sweetness. What we can see here is a symbol of the time of Francis, a symbol of bitterness. So people who came near to the lepers must wear this mask to protect themselves in front of these persons which have been excluded and dangerous not only because of health questions, but dangerous because of considered sinners. 
So especially the persons who at least take a little bit care of this poor, they have been obligated to wear this mask. And you can see also the form of mask is not showing yet dignity and respect. And Francis experienced this bitterness but showing mercy to the lepers, he is coming to sweetness. This statue today in Assisi, near to the place where Francis may have met the leper, is showing this experience of sweetness, this being astonished of the leper. Francis, who is showing mercy. So to come from bitterness to sweetness is not only changing the opinion or changing the world view, it is more. It's a change of feeling, a change of what is really ongoing in the heart and in the warmth, a radical about face. And Francis said, that he waited after six experience a little bit, and then he left the world. He has not left our world as world, but he left the world of the burghers and of the nobility of Assisi. He left the world coming to face. The radical about face is leading to a radical change of standpoint. Francis is leaving the world of the city of Assisi and he is going down as Jesus was going down in the image to the lepers. Instead, living inside of the city, Francis started to live outside of the city together with the lepers. He was re-establishing the justice regarding the lepers. He was re-establishing justice, righteousness, bending the lepers back into the right order, into the right position, because that was the true significance of justice in the time of Francis. To put something back to its authentic place, to put something in perspective, to present something in the proper light, to restore something to its original condition, to put on the right hand, to fix, to straighten, to turn towards, to arrange something to sweet, to line up, to put back into the right order, into the right order of dignity, into the right order of friendship, into the right order of mercy. Here we can see Francis becoming a friend of the lepers, washing the lepers, here, some of the lepers is sitting on his knees. In the case of the lepers, justice means to reestablish the relationship based on compassion and friendship as taught by Jesus Christ. This experience of mercy and the practiced distinct justice led Francis also to find a distinct face in the church based on the passion and the cross of Jesus Christ. And Francis himself had a profound experience of God's mercy 
in his own life. Also in the beginning, in the time when he started to make friendship with the lepers, and when he found the first brothers and sisters following him, his biograph, Celano, is telling us a story which happened in a place called Pocho Bustone. And you can see this place, how it is today, in our days. It's up in the mountains of the valley of Rieti. And we have still the cave where Francis prayed. And this small chapel attacked to the rock. Let us listen to what happened to Francis in this place. Celano is writing. One day when he, Francis, had invoked the Lord's mercy with his whole heart, the Lord showed him what he must do. He was filled with such great joy that failing to restrain himself in the face of his happiness, he carelessly mentioned something to others. Day by day, the blessed Father Francis was being filled with the consolation and the grace of the Holy Spirit. And with all vigilance, he was forming his new sons with new instructions. One day, he was marveling at the Lord's mercy in the kindness shown to him. He wished that the Lord would show him the cause of life for him and his brothers, and he went to a place of prayer. Here we are. As he often did, he remained there a long time with fear and trembling before the ruler of the whole earth. He recalled in the bitterness of his soul the years he spent badly, frequently repeating this phrase, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He identified himself with the lepers which have been considered sinners. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He considers himself not better than the others considered sinners. And the text of Celano is ongoing. Gradually, an indescribable joy and tremendous sweetness, sweetness, began to well up deep in his heart. He began to lose himself. His feelings were pressed together and said darkness disappeared, which fear of sin had gathered in his heart. Certainty of the forgiveness of all his sins poured in. And the assurance of being revived in grace was given to him. Then he was caught up above himself and totally engulfed in light. And with his inmost soul opened wide, he clearly saw the future as that sweetness and light with true, renewed in spirit. He now, he now, now seemed to be changed into another person. The experience of mercy with the lepers and the experience of mercy in this place, Pocho Bustone, changed him into being a different person, having a different lifestyle, forming a different way to relate himself to the world, the people, the church, and to the society in the light of the gospel. 
And Francis wanted that this mercy takes place in his brotherhood. One day he is writing to a minister. I speak to you as best I can about the state of your soul. You must consider as grace all that impedes you from loving the Lord God. And whoever has become an impediment to you, whether brothers or others, even if they lay hands on you, and may you want it to be this way and not otherwise, and let this be for you the true obedience. Love those who do those things to you. And do not wish anything different from them unless it is something the Lord shall have given you. And love them in this and do not wish that they be better Christians. And let this be more than a hermitage to you. What happens? The friars have not been willed to abide to this minister. And they fight at him. And he was tired. He wanted to leave. And Francis is ongoing writing. And if you have done this, I wish to know in this way, if you love the Lord and me, his servant and yours, that there is not any brother in the world who has sinned. However much he could have sinned, who after he has looked into your eyes would ever depart without your mercy. If he is looking for mercy, and he, if he were not looking for mercy, you would ask him if he wants mercy. And if he would sin a thousand times before your eyes, love him more than me, so that you may draw them to the Lord. And always be merciful with brothers such as these. And then Francis wanted the brothers to change the rule. He wanted to change the rule and to put into the rule a chapter considering specially how to treat brothers who are sinning with mercy. Let us listen how Francis changed the rule. The image we are looking to is showing us Francis is coming to the chapter of the brothers, speaking to the brothers. Holy friends is standing under the door. If any brother, at the instigation of the enemy, sins mortally in regard to those sins concerning which it has been decreed among the brothers to have recourse only to the provincial ministers, let him have recourse as quickly as possible and without delay. If these ministers are priests with a heart full of mercy, let them impose on him a penance. But if the ministers are not priests, let them have it imposed by others who are priests of the order. They must be careful not to be angry or disturbed at the sin of another, for anger and disturbance impede charity in themselves and in others. So Francis wants to change, and he changed the rule. The rule, the law of the order, must serve the distinct justice by acting with mercy. The distinct justice which helps to come back into the brotherhood, which takes care and which promotes healing. 
But Francis is proposing mercy not only to the friars. He is proposing mercies and distinct justice to all faithful. He is writing, for example, in his letter to all faithful, let those who have received the power of charging others pass judgment with mercy, as they would wish to receive mercy from the Lord. For judgment will be without mercy for those who have not shown mercy. The power of charging as an occurrence of establishing the distinct justice by mercy, not to exclude, but to bring back into the brother and sisterhood those who have sinned. The distinct justice which promotes the good in every person and promotes the common good which helps to support and to leave all negative actions back, to come to a true conversion of life. And Francis wants that everybody should receive this distinct justice by mercies, and he asked the Pope to have a special grace, the grace of Porzuncola, the place in Assisi which Francis loved. And our image now is showing here Francis together with all the bishops announcing the special permission of the Pope that everybody who comes to this church in Porzuncola willed to change his life converting to the gospel will be justified by God's mercy. You will have this privilege still in our days, every 2nd August, especially in Potsungula in Assisi, but I think in every Franciscan church of the world. Is it right? And Francis is writing in his admonition to everybody, to all faithfuls. Where there is a heart full of mercy and discernment, there is neither excess nor hardness of heart. Here we have the root of mercy and the distinct justice. Francis recognizes mercy in the patience of Jesus Christ. He recognizes the mercy in the weakness of God's patience. God's patience in Jesus Christ as the true power of mercy. He is writing in his meditation about the father, our Father, forgive us our trespasses through your ineffable mercy, through the power of the patience of your beloved Son, and through the merits and intercession of the ever-blessed Virgin and all your elect. And as we forgive those who trespass against us, and what we do not completely forgive, make us, Lord, forgive completely, that we may truly love our enemies because of you, and we may fervently intercede for them before you, returning no one evil for evil, and we may strive to help everyone in you. The image I have chosen is showing us Jesus Christ on a cross formed as tree of life. And what you can see here is the body of a leper. Jesus Christ 
wie es on the cross, the wounds of the lepers. Healing, the wounds of all sinners by his passionate love and mercy. With his vision, Francis is promoting and pushing a theological tradition. And I want to introduce you a little bit to this Franciscan tradition following this life and vision of Francis, looking to some of the great Franciscans, so that you may have an idea of the Franciscan tradition. And this reflection is bringing us first to Saint Anthony, still preaching the gospel in the lifetime of Francis. Saint Anthony, in his preachings, is presenting God as approaching the humans on a quadriga. What you can see on the image is called a quadriga. It's a car run by four horses. And here the symbol of God is a symbol of peace. In this case, it's an angel, the angel of peace, symbolizing God is coming, running towards the humans on this quadriga. The quadriga is a symbol for God hurrying up to help the lost humanity. And the four horses are symbols for the four divine principal predicates, the four characteristics of God by which he approaches the humans. The horses have names. Mercy, love, justice, and leniency. As the human being is created as an image and in likeness of God, he is called to correspond in his life to this quadriga, to run by four horses. So our lives should be driven by four horses, named mercy, love, justice, and leniency. Also for Saint Anthony, Justice can be done only in the context of love, mercy, and leniency. And the four horses must run together to carry on the quadriga, to carry on God into our lives. Then we are coming to Alexander of Hales. Alexander of Hales is the first teacher of the Franciscan friars at the University of Paris and founder of the intellectual Franciscan tradition. And he questions a possible justification of the fallen humanity. How the fallen humanity can be justified? Interpreting the biblical revelation, he recognizes the justification in God's own acting. God approaches the humans based on his justice and love. To justify the humans, God applies his justice and love by using mercy. Mercy is a way how God applies justice and love. Justice without love is cru cruelty. And love without justice is prejudice and bias. So justice and love must come together, and the best way of bringing love and justice together is the application of mercy. The image I have chosen is showing the text, the biblical text our Franciscan Alexander is interpreting. 
the image is from Rembrandt. The interpretation of the biblical scene, Jesus and the women who sinned. You all know this biblical text. Jesus and the sinner. Let us come to the most famous disciple of Alexander. You have all have heard about him, the Holy Bonaventure, Saint Bonaventure. Also the most famous pupil of Alexander, Saint Bonaventure, considers the problem of justification. How we can be justified as we are all sinners. And here he sums his philosophical and theological reflections in the conclusion that the justification of the humans is based on mercy and truth. The human justification is based on God's gift of forgiveness by mercy. And that God is acting forgiveness by mercy reveals who God truly is. And then St. Bonaventure is giving us an image. I will show you some couples of the image Bonaventure is giving to us. That's a painting in a book. He is giving us the image of the throne of mercy. The truth about God is finally revealed on the cross, which is the throne of mercy. The throne of mercy, the cross, is the summit and peak of God's revelation in love and his self-devotion. What you can see here is the throne, the king's throne. And God the Father is sitting on the king's throne and he is offering his son on the cross in the form of the tree of life. And here you have the dove. You call it dove? Yeah. The dove, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Trinity sitting on the throne of mercy. That's our justification. That's a book painting of the time of Bonaventure. We have others. Here we have, how do you call it in English? The stone which is in the roof and is holding all. If you take away this stone, the roof will fall down. Cornerstone. Here you can see a cornerstone of a church in North Germany uh, built up in the 14th century in the time when the Franciscans came. You can see the throne of mercy is holding all up. Otherwise, the roof of the church will collapse. The father sitting on the throne, offering his son on the cross, mercy. And the Holy Spirit coming down, the dove coming down, bringing the Eucharist. So host here. The throne of mercy. And another one, that's the Baroque time, a painter of Venice showing the throne of mercy. God the Father, surrounded by angels, is offering his passionate son. You all know pictures like this. Normally it's a mother, Mary, holding Jesus like this. But here it's a father offering to us his son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So Bonaventure's theology and vision put into art the throne of mercy and the justice of God is coming up to the human beings, to the sinners from the throne of mercy. And the last Franciscan, famous also he, John Dunscott. 
looking to the patience of Jesus Christ and his cross, blessed John Dunscotus recognizes God's work of mercy, truth, and justice. Mercy, truth, and justice appear on the cross and correspond to God's self-revelation of love. This love of God, which accepts the patient and the cross, establishes justice as a just relation between God and the fallen humanity. This love reveals the truth about God's redemptive will and realizes the justification by mercy. Justice corresponds to getting the human back to the right order and relation of love and mercy. Love and mercy is the true and only way to bring the human backs to God's love. So on the cross, in his son God, bends down his love to the humans for bending them back to love. Mercy becomes the distinct justice able to bend us humans back to God's love. And that's expressed also in art. We have a first image of this here. You have here the sinner. It's a fresque in the church, not anymore so well. I have better images. And Jesus, here's the head of Jesus. And Jesus is coming down with the head and he, with his arm. And he is hugging from above from the cross, hugging the sinner. It's coming out of the Cistercienz tradition, but the Franciscan picked it up, especially John Dunscotus. You have here a better image. Jesus is hugging down from the cross the sinner by mercy, giving the offering of justification. That's also a painting in a book. And you have here a representation of the Baroque time on the front of many houses in South Germany and Austria, you will find this sculpture. Jesus, you see, one hand is still on the cross, but the other hand is free to hug the sinner. To bend the sinner back to God's love, to bring him back to God's love. And we have here a modern painting that's from Kokoschko. Kokoschka, that's an Austrian painter. This painting is coming out of the last year of the Second World War. So, Jesus, the people are not even looking up to the cross. Somebody, yes, this man here is looking up to the cross, but all the others are looking in a different direction. Expression of sin. Nevertheless, Jesus is coming down hugging the humanity wounded by the war, bringing back God's justice, mercy, and love. And at least I found this evening a picture coming out of the Franciscan tradition that's the same motif. In this case, it's Francis who is hugged from Jesus down from the cross. It's upstairs. I want coming to the conclusion, mentioning a story of the life of Francis. You all know the story, the Wolf of Gubbio. Today we know the wolf was not an animal. 
It was a night. And the head of the wolf was his sign. You know, he was dangerous for the people. And Francis wanted to, to help the people of the city of Gubbio. And he went out of the city. But he was advised against this more than once, but irrespective of the warnings, he made Francis the sign of the cross and went beyond the gate with a small group of followers in tow. When he neared the lair of the wolf, he crowed, held back at a safe distance, but remained close enough to witness what transpired. The wolf, having seen the group approach, rushed at Francis with its jaws open. Again, Francis made the sign of the cross. Please remember now what the sign of the cross significance. Mercy, justice, love. And commanded the wolf to cheese its attacks in the name of God, at which point the wolf trotted up to him, dochilily, and lay at his feet, putting his head in his hands. And then the text, the so-called Fioretti, describes word for word Francis' dealings with the wolf. Brother Wolf, you brought much evil in this land, destroying and killing the creatures of God without God's permission. But those who you killed have been made after the image of God. For which thing you are worthy of being hanged like a robber and a murderer. All men cry out against you. The dogs pursue, pursue you, and all the inhabitants of this city are your enemies. But I will make peace between you and them, Brother Wolf. So that you never any more offend them and they shall forgive all your past offenses. And neither man nor dog shall pursue you anymore. The wolf bowed its head and submitted to Francis completely at his mercy. I promise if I if I'm fed every day by the inhabitants of this land, I will peacefully live among them. In agreement, the wolf placed one of its four paws, paws in Francis' outstretched hand, and the oath was made. Francis then commanded the wolf to return with him to Gubbio, to the city. At this sight, the men who had followed him through the walls were utterly astonished, and they spread the news. Soon the whole city knew of the miracle. The townsfolk gathered in the city's marketplace to await Francis and his companion, and were shocked to see the wolf behaving as so he is a pet. When Francis reached the marketplace, he offered the assembled crowd the same sermon, and he is quoted as saying, how much we ought to dread the jaws of hell if the jaws of so small an animal as a wolf can make a whole city tremble through fear? With the sermon ended, Francis renewed his pact with the wolf publicly, assuring if that the people of Gubbio would feed him, 
there will be peace. And once more, the wolf placed its paw in, its, in Francis' hand. You can see it here. So the, aggress the aggressiveness of the wolf was a consequence of his hunger. He was not fed. Nobody has given him something to eat. So he was becoming a murderer. But the merciful and distinct justice of Francis does denounce the bad doing, but helped to re-establish the right relation between the wolf and the people by forgiveness and by taking over the responsible care of each other. That's the distinct justice to take care of each other. Finishing, I want to quote Pope Francis, his bull of indiction of the extraordinary jubilee of mercy. Jesus Christ is the face of the Father's mercy. These words might well sum up the mystery of the Christian faith. Mercy has become living and visible in Jesus of Nazareth, reaching its culmination in him. The Father, rich in mercy, after having revealed his name to Moses as a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, has never ceased to show in various ways throughout history his divine nature. In the fullness of time, when everything had been arranged according to his plan of salvation, he sent his only son into the world, born of the Virgin Mary, to reveal his love for us in a definitive way. Whoever sees Jesus, sees the Father, Jesus of Nazareth, by his words, his actions, and his entire person reveals the mercy of God. We need constantly to contemplate the mystery of mercy. It is a wellspring of joy, serenity, and peace. Our salvation depends on it. Mercy. The word reveals the very mystery of the most holy trinity. Mercy. The ultimate and supreme act by which God comes to meet us. Mercy. The fundamental law that dwells in the heart of every person who looks sincerely into the eyes of his brothers and sisters on the path of life. Mercy, the bridge that connects God and humans, opening our hearts to the hope of being loved forever, despite our sinfulness. Thank you very much for your attention.